Salat is the most important action of our deen. We want to make sure that we perfect the Salat. Some people think perfecting Salat means only apparent actions correctly, maybe uh, learning about the Salat, maybe uh, you know praying the salat on time which is of course very very important but perfecting salat requires much more depth today we want to discuss the condition of the heart how is your heart in salat when you are standing before allah subhanahu wa ta'ala the almighty what is the state of your heart salat is the remembrance of allah and praise him and prostrate before him and show gratitude and love to him subhanahu wa ta'ala but if the person is physically standing before Allah, but his heart is somewhere else, sometimes this can rather be a reason of the anger of Allah and not the pleasure of Allah. So we want to understand, where should our heart be? My brothers and sisters, when the person prays, he must be in complete khushu' and khudu' to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. His heart must be present. The person will not be re rewarded for his salat except for that portion where he was focused and concentrating in nowadays a lot of people are struggling with giving allah subhanahu wa ta'ala full concentration for a few minutes in the day and the night isn't that a shame he must first to get this khushu' and concentration in his life he must learn how to how to be watchful over his heart sort of a, a quality control process he has to ask himself before salat what am I doing now? Who, am I, who will I be talking to now? Who will be speaking to me now? Who will I be in his presence now? When the person gets his feelings in his heart and he raises his hand and says, Allahu Akbar, he must have that feeling that he has moved to a different place. Full attention and full concentration must be given to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala because now you are in his presence. Now you are standing before him subhanahu wa ta'ala. When you recite your Quran, when you are in ruku', when you are in sujood, when you are saying Subhana Rabbi Al-A'la, these words, they must come out of your heart. You must ponder over the meaning. You must focus over the meaning. So we have to be watchful over this heart. We watch the heart before salah. We watch the heart during salah. The first step to perfect my salah is that I, I look during my salah. Is my heart present or am I standing physically before Allah Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala? But all I can think about is my wife or my husband or my children or work sometimes it, it gets hard for the muslim because of his indulgement in this world and you know his the, the the lifestyle that we have and how fast this lifestyle has become sometimes we struggle to give allah subhanahu wa ta'ala attention so it is something that i would like to say is not easy don't think don't assume that you can bring khushu and concentration in your life just by an order from your brain for the person to have khushu' in his salah, the process starts long before salah. It starts in your life. When the person is in the remembrance of Allah in his life, away from sin, close to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, working in da'wah, or wherever he is, but he is mindful of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, and he, he lowers his gaze, he doesn't indulge in haram acts, doesn't talk haram, and then comes to the house of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, or, or in his house he is praying, if his life outside Salat can be worked on, then insha'Allah this state can be preserved when the person stands before Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Some people think I can you know, do whatever I want and then I'm going to come and I have khushu' in my Salat. It doesn't work that way. You have to come to Salat in that state. This is why the Prophet of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, he even directed us to the way we walk to the house of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. The way you approach Salat. You should not rush. You should not run coming to Salat. Why? Because already you are, in, you are preparing yourself for standing before Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So we have to be mindful of the Salat and watchful over our hearts. When we are, in, we are reading Quran, we try as much as we can to ponder over its meaning. When you make our takbir al-ula, you know, we think, oh, now I'm saying Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is the greatest. Allahu Akbar. Allah is greater than everything that can busy me now. Allah is greater than, uh, than everything that can distract me from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. When I'm in ruku', I remember, you know, 
Subhana Rabbi Al-Azim, Subhana Rabbi Al-Azim. Allah Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala, my, my Lord is the greatest, free from all imperfections, Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala. I ponder over these meanings. I try to take these words out of my heart. And uh, when I'm in, in sujood, I remember the Prophet of Allah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam says in the hadith, the closest you are to Allah Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala is when you are in sujood. So when the person puts his forehead on the floor, humbles himself before his Lord, you know, and starts saying and glorifying Allah, praising Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Wallahi, my brothers and sisters, the feelings, the emotions that might come to his heart at that moment, no words in this world can describe them. So we want to fix the quality of our salah. We don't want our salah to be an image without core, without depth. We want our salah to be an aspect of our life. The Prophet of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam says, the comfort and coolness of my eyes is salah. He sallallahu alayhi wa sallam didn't pray like many of us prayed. We pray now to offload, to you know, offload the obligation. And then when I finish, alhamdulillah, I just prayed my duhr or my asr, and now I can focus on my life and focus on my worldly things. No, no, no. The Prophet of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam enjoyed standing before Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. He used to tell Bilal radiyallahu anhu, Oh Bilal, call adhan, let us rest. The world was disturbing for Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. So prayer was his comfort sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. We want to work on our hearts. We want to ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to, to, to give us this quality, you know. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, Verily the believers are successful. They are the ones who had concentration and devotion in their salat. So as much as we can, we need to work on this aspect. Imam Abu Hanif al-Nu'man rahmatullahi alayhi, he said, I want you to imagine in a dark, cold, windy night, you are on a ship and the ship wrecked. Everybody drowned. And just before your turn to drown, a piece of float wood came to you. And you're holding on to it for your dear life. He says, hold on to the salah for your dear life, like you're holding on to that piece of wood. Ibn al-Adham or others, Rahmatullah said, when you say Allahu Akbar, mean it. You know what that means? Allah is greater. Do you mean it? Let's put you to the test. How many of us Hear the words. Allahu Akbar, Allahu Akbar. And you're watching your favorite soccer team. Or you're watching this Bollywood movie. And that director's got you hooked, man. You know why? Because now this girl loves this guy. And her father's a villain. He doesn't want him to get married. And now you tell the girl, run girl, elope. It's so romantic. Run, you go girl. Go. They're doing something haram and you're cheering them on. They come together in the middle of the desert. In slow motion. And the guy's hair flying like looks like Fabio, right? You know that guy? With the six pack and the bags and the... No? Just me? Again, I love you. And the sky is clear, but it rains. Because it's more romantic that way. And if nowhere, it's a desert, a tree pops up. And behind the tree, dancers come out and start. What happened? <laughs> you want me to leave this? I need to know what happened to this couple. But you hear, Allahu Akbar, Allahu Akbar. It's a test of faith. You hear Allahu Akbar, Allah is greater, but, but your actions and deeds, you're saying no. Allah is not Akbar. That movie is Akbar. That game is Akbar. You understand? You understand why Ali ibn Abi Talib radiallahu an used to shiver when he make wudu, just to make ablution. He was asked, why do you shake when you make ablution? He hasn't even gotten to prayer yet. You know what his answer was? You know, after a little bit, I will stand in front of whom? They used to prepare themselves mentally, physically, spiritually, everything with the heart. 
So he says, when you say Allahu Akbar, mean it. Nothing is greater than Allah at this time. As if you see the Kaaba. And as if you're standing on the Sirat, the path. Beneath it, the hellfire. The angel of death is behind you, has an arrow pointed at your back, could let go at any time. Your sins are surrounding you, they will destroy you at any time. And only Allah sees you and He has the mercy upon you. He's the only one that can actually save you from the hellfire and attain you Jannah. And pray, if this is your last pray, this is your last hope, you have no other. You know what the scholars say, if you want to speak to Allah, you read the Qur'an. So you're reading the Qur'an as Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is talking to you directly. And you're talking back to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. It's called a silah, connection. You understand when you go into the masjid, akhi and ukhti, when you take off your shoe, this is where your life belongs. It belongs in the bottom of that shoe where you take it off. It doesn't come into the masjid. But how many of us, you know when you go into prayer, what happens? Oh my God, my wife told me a shopping list and I have to get this for the kids and the milk. Oh Lord, my cereal. We saw, remember that story? The man came up from outside. Outside of the city. So the Imam made a mistake. It was, uh, it was supposed to be four rak'at, four units of prayers, but he only made three. He goes, yeah Imam, you only made three. We're supposed to make four. He goes, what? I never make a mistake. Uh, no, Imam, we only prayed three rak'at, not four. Because how do you know that? He says, you see, Imam, uh, I have four stores. <laughs> in the first rak'ah, I did all the calculations and the game plans and to how to improve my first store. In the second rak'ah, I did the second, and I just never got to the fourth store. <laughs> when you say Allahu Akbar, 